Do you want to know how to manage your fear of separation and embrace it? Today I'm going to be real with you because this is something that I struggle with big time. I was a child of trauma like so many of us and hit me right here. My fear of separation and abandonment was significant because of what I went through. And it's a response that is very typical for children that face trauma. If you actually do a, re a quick Google search for the ACE study, it's A-C-E, it's an acronym. It means Adverse Childhood Experience. If you look for the ACE study, it's a series of 10 questions. You read through those questions and you discover if you answer yes to any of them, you are a person that has had childhood trauma and this might be something that's impacting you. Two thirds of Americans face this. So you've got a good chance of getting a one out of 10 at least on the score. The higher up you go, the more trauma you've had. All that means is you got more tools that you can rely on to pull you out of those responses that it creates within you. One of those is this fear of abandonment and separation. And this is what hit me hard from my childhood because the nature of it, the way that this guy groomed me in order to take advantage of my situation when I was four, made me feel completely and utterly alone. I was incapable of reaching out and getting help and I believed not only that I couldn't get help, but that I was unworthy of getting help. That I had to keep what was going on absolutely silent or I would never be worthy of love from anyone. And so this would cause me to withdraw and hide many times when I would get caught into the difficulty of looking at what I believed I was in comparison to my brothers and sisters and my parents that I loved and admired and I thought that they were so superior to me at times I couldn't take it and I ran away from home quite a bit in fact I ran away from home so frequently it became kind of a running family joke my mom would call the school they'd make an announcement you're please come to the office I have 11 brothers and sisters but I was the youngest so four older than me they would come home from school and begin combing the streets looking for me because I had run away again. And the cops would be out and it was kind of this thing, but I truly believed I was alone and I thought I had to handle some things on my own and I couldn't take it and I would disappear until they found me. And when they found me, it would always affirm for me that maybe I shouldn't be alone. Maybe there were people that cared for me. It was a moment for me to realize, oh, they noticed I was gone. That would surprise me every time as a little kid. This may be you. You may have something like this that causes you to withdraw from work, stay at home, withdraw from social events. Maybe it's a response to something that happened to you in your childhood. Maybe it's something that you just have within you because you have social anxiety. I don't know what your core issue is. But for me, it was childhood trauma and it hits this way. So I had to realize a few things. I had to realize that I was capable of taking care of myself physically and emotionally in order to calm myself. I was so convinced that I had to do this that I had to honor that request within myself. Create a safe space for myself where I could sit and be like, I'm okay, I've got myself, I'm safe here, I'm good, I can do this. That was an important step for me. Then, once I was in that space and able to feel like I could take care of myself, that was the essence of running away. I would hide in some place with some food and usually realize that I needed to go home when the food ran out. <laughs> and um, That's what I would do. So, if that's you, if you're in that space, whatever it be, you find that out. Then, you need to start showing up as who you really are. What that means is you need to start examining within yourself what is not only the places that you think are bad that are what are separating you, and making you feel abandoned from society. What is that thing that is showing up within you? Because that's how you're identifying yourself. And then you must also identify within yourself what makes you great. And you must hold both of those together and offer yourself compassion for the place that you are in that says to you, you have no value and forgive yourself for whatever you need to forgive and let it go and hold what is great. And in that space, 
you now can act with gratitude. You back this up by looking at all the good that is in your life, thinking of those that truly do love you, thinking of those things in your life that you experience that you love, the warmth of the sun on your skin, whatever it may be that you can be grateful for. But if you're breathing, if you're sitting here watching this video breathing, you have something to be grateful for no matter how hard your life is, I promise you. And that act of gratitude will transition the emotional state and withdrawal that you're in after you go through these steps. And it would allow you then to see the world in a different way and to find courage. Courage is hard to find when you are sitting in a place where you feel that you are alone and abandoned and not able to receive the help that you need. That's a tough place to be. Gratitude opens your heart and your mind to the fact that there are in fact people out there in the world that see you and love you and want to help you. And then you can act. Do not stay in separation and hiding. Reconnect with those that are around you that you know and love. Find people that you can reach out to and say to them, I'm struggling, I'm having a tough day, I just wanna kinda of disappear right now. Let them know what's going on so that they can reconnect with you and let you know that this is not something that you have to go through alone. In the middle of my divorce, you know, during the height of you know when COVID first started, and the isolation and I was alone, there were a lot of things that hit me that made me feel like I was abandoned and that I was separate from those that I loved and that I could not connect with them and I was unworthy. And it was hitting me particularly hard one day. I was struggling to accomplish anything. I just wanted to curl up in fetal position, stay on the floor and let the world disappear because I was abandoned. And I reached out I did all this, I went out into nature, I kind of went through the process and I was still really struggling. I called my sister because I love my sister and she loves me and we've been there for each other our whole lives and she's close by and I just was like, I am struggling. I'm really, really struggling. And you know what she did? She broke the COVID rules and she let me come into her home with her family and risked the possibility that I would infect them with COVID but did it to allow me to reconnect. And that act was something that transformed me. It reminded me that I am not separate and that this moment where I'm feeling lost and abandoned is just a moment created by a situation that happens to so many people. 50% of people, in fact, that go through divorce face similar things, right? It helped me to see that. And in doing that, it reconnected me to myself it allowed me to love myself again because I could see the love reflected back upon me by those that were around me, my family that loved me. It was a powerful thing and I was grateful for it and it pulled me out of that downward spiral that I was in. If you can use these tools to do that, I know that you can move away from this powerful drive to separate or abandon all humanity when you're feeling unworthy unsafe, incapable of meeting the challenge that you face, of whatever that may be. And you can let go of this fear state and move through it. But you have to recognize it first so that you can then understand how to get out of it. Don't let yourself sit alone without support when it's all around you. You are a human that is loved and should be loved regardless of where you are in your life. One good thing about looking at this, and when you consider the fact that um, this fear of separation and abandonment is something that is so compelling to many people, and that it is childhood trauma is something that has impacted two thirds of Americans, it can really start to allow you to feel gratitude for this communal expression of dysfunction that you are facing and knowing I'm not alone in this and gratitude that there's a community of people that can understand you and know that you're in this space. Because when you begin to see this fear of separation and abandonment just as a vile, horrible thing, it makes it harder. It, you want to reject it. Your body is gonna say, don't do this, stay away. And in fact, there are so many things 
a mindset change can can completely transform how you process what you're doing. So quit looking at it as a fear of abandonment and separation as an evil, vile thing. It is simply a trigger letting you know that it's there. It's meant to inform you. Be grateful for the feeling. It's informing you that you're moving into a space that may not be serving you well. So that may actually be serving you well if you're surrounded by horrible people that are abandoning you, that are unable to help you. And that is what you're being told. Get those people out of your life. Go find ones that will embrace you like my sister did and take you in and remind you that you're good. So look at both sides of that coin. Embrace this as an opportunity with gratitude and transform your concept of how this hits you and you'll be set. I'm James. Thanks for watching my video.